Greetings BioCore for you general microbiology students. Um, this video in two parts will be on chapter six in our lab manual cast of characters. Um, so before we launch into individual um, microbes, we're going to use our cast of characters um, handout. It will be in your lab packet. Um, I want to stress that these um, cast of character bushes or trees, these are not phylogenetic trees. Um, phylogenetic trees show evolution, evolutionary relationship between um, organisms and these uh, diagrams we're going to be using aren't showing evolutionary relationships. It's just one way to organize information, um, similarities and differences that might help us. So first what we'll do is we'll just go over an overview using your um, cast of characters handout from your lab packet, which I have right here. And um, we can see that there's a number of different groups of microbes and organisms we're going to be discussing. The first thing we want to do is distinguish between um, acellular microbes, acellular meaning without cells, and our cellular microbes. So what we can do is ask a simple question, and that is, can the microbe, the agent, synthesize a cell membrane, also known as a cytoplasmic membrane or plasma membrane? And if the answer is no, that is the microbe can't synthesize its cell membrane, it's considered acellular, not made of cells. And we'll have two examples of acellular microbes. The prions, the disease-causing prions, we'll see these are abnormally folded um, proteins. They lack DNA and RNA. And the second group of acellular microbes are the viruses. Now viruses consist of protein protecting either DNA or RNA. So viruses have genetic information, whereas our prions lack it. If we go back up to the top here, and again we ask, can the microbe organism synthesize a cell membrane? If the answer is yes, then these are going to be our cellular microbe cellular um, organisms. Now the second question we're going to ask is, um, can the cellular microbe, does it contain a nucleus? And if the answer is no, that the microbe is cellular but it lacks a nucleus, then they are classified as prokaryotes, literally before the nucleus. And from lecture, you'll recall that in the three domain system of cellular organisms, there's two domains that contain all the prokaryotes, and those are domain archaea, and we often refer to them as extremophiles because they live in really extreme environments, and then the second domain of prokaryotes or domain bacteria. And indeed, this is where we focus most of our time in lecture is on members of domain bacteria. And if we go back up then and ask ourselves if we have a cellular microbe that, can, um, that has a nucleus, then these are our eukaryotes, and they would belong to domain eukarya. And within the eukaryotes, there are several different groups. In um, the old days, we would talk about the four kingdoms of um, eukaryotes, kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae, and kingdom animalia. But with nucleic acid sequencing, it was discovered that the so-called members of kingdom protista, many of them were actually not very closely related. So instead, we should be using the term eukaryotic microbes, but do be aware that the term um, protist, you'll hear that often, kingdom protista, you'll be hearing a lot about that. So we will be discussing an animal-like um, eukaryotic microbe. These animal-like, usually unicellular um, um, eukaryotic microbes, a common name for them is protozoa because they have animal-like features. And another group of the eukaryotic microbes are the photosynthetic algae. They have plant-like characteristics. We will be looking at members of kingdom fungi. We'll be looking at unicellular, unicellular yeasts, Saccharomyces, and also the multicellular filamentous fungus, the mold rhizopus. We, um, you'll recall that in chapter five, the microscope lab, we did look at a member of kingdom plantae, um, and that was our beautiful Elodea. We saw the chloroplasts that, according to the endosymbiotic theory, had evolved from primitive endosymbiotic cyanobacteria. And finally, we will be looking at members of kingdom animalia. Humans are members of kingdom animalia. Um, we're motile, multicellular, our cells lack cell walls. We don't carry out uh, photosynthesis. We have to have preformed organic molecules as a, as a source of carbon and energy. We're chemoheterotrophs. 
And in addition to ourselves, in lab we'll be looking at mosquitoes, which are called arthropod vectors. They can transfer pathogens from one host to the other. And we'll also be looking at Tania solium, the so-called um, pork tapeworm, uh, parasitic helminth or worm.